it was a lucky coincidence. I, I, I mean, the guys, David and Dan, who were the showrunners and writers, they are huge fans of Sherlock. I was shooting in Toronto at that time on a pilot and I had a phone call from my agent saying that, you know, they've been in touch and can you have an interview with them? So we were chatting on Skype in, I think, in my lunch break and, you know, we just had a 10 minute conversation and they were really great. And at the end of that, they said, we'd like you to come and do a couple of episodes. You know, I've done a lot of stuff by then, a lot of TV by then, you know, various budgets in a European sense, but I had never done anything like Game of Thrones before. And um, I mean, I, I remember walking into the set on my first day of prep uh, and I walked into the throne room and I think I just stood in there and I thought, I've got no idea how to light this. You know, I was just completely, it's so big, you know, it's such a different scale. And then it just, it, you know, it just, as it always does, it just happens. And, you know, I had a great crew. I mean, it's a fantastic crew in Game of Thrones. And Tom Gates, the main gaffer, who's become a very good friend of mine, he helped me in the beginning, you know. Yeah, it was great. And uh, now I've been doing three seasons. Because you have to maintain a look throughout the whole season, you know, it, it means there's a lot of dialogue between all the, the five different DOPs. Which, you know, is always something for me as well as an incredible source of learning and knowledge, you know, to, to be able to speak to those guys and to learn about their approach. It's very set up in the way, you know, the cameras move and composition is obviously a very classical style. The camera doesn't move that much or it moves very slowly. And because it's, it's period, obviously lighting wise, it's always either the daylight coming in through the windows or it's candles and flambeaux and, and firelight. So it's kind of working with those limited sources and, and trying to give it your own. They're shooting in Ireland, Iceland, Spain and Croatia. So you, you get an incredible mix of locations and light and scenery. You know, the sets are really built as sets. I mean, the sets, like I said, when they look big, that's because they are big. You know, so and and you know because it's a big budget show, you have to resources to to light them. You know the way they should be lit. So the White Walkers don't care. We're all the same to them. Meet for their army. Together we can beat them. That was the biggest scene um, sequence that's ever been shot on Game of Thrones up to that point. So it was kind of new to everyone. Uh, it was, you know, and, and once you come to something like that, which is so big, I mean, we had, I don't know, I think 350 extras every day for 16 days. We had 50 stuntmen for 16 days every day. A lot of different makeup setups um, for all the extras. I mean, we had extras come in at 2.30 in the morning because it took them five hours to get made up in makeup. And then those guys would start shooting as soon as the light. I think I got there every morning at about five o'clock. We, we prepped when it was still dark. And as soon as um, I said, okay, we can start shooting from a light point of view, we started shooting and we didn't stop until it was too dark. Because we were shooting in, in Belfast in November, I mean, you literally have a nine hour day of daylight and maybe eight hours of shootable daylight. So, so for all the exterior scenes, I had to light it night for day so that we could continue shooting once it's got dark outside. I try not to light any exterior, so exterior wise I just use negative fill uh, and bounce boards to, to give shape. On, on the interior in Heart Home, which was uh, when they all gather around the fire, I mean really the fire was the main source, uh, there was an opening in the ceiling, so I think I had a couple of genie booms or jerry pickers with um, I think it was 18k Arimaxes that pointed straight down through the top so it gave you that little bit of those small shafts coming through the, the wood um, and it gave a softer top light in the middle and just that contrast between the warm fire and the colder exterior obviously it was set in the north of the country so the tone is always very cold I think there was a balloon over the, the two um, Arimaxes just to give it a general ambient of daylight. Two 4Ks in a, in a, in a big balloon-shaped 
box that you can float above the sets. You know, once you do something like this, it becomes much more almost a military organizational project because you have to really know what you're doing every day for 16 days to be able to achieve everything that you need to achieve to make that sequence. Plus we had four cameras. So for me, it was a lot about, you know, we would shoot one day, then I would go home and then I would work out everything that we had to do the next day. What does each camera do at what point for us to really achieve everything that we need? One of the things I'm most proud of, of that sequence is that a lot of that stuff is in camera. Obviously, there's a lot of enhancement from a visual effects point of view, but special effects wise, all the snow, the storm, the wind, all of that is in camera. All the stunts, there's nothing that's done later. Part of me didn't think we'd make it through that 16 days and getting everything that we had to get, but we literally got every single shot that we needed for that sequence. And, you know, thankfully it went down very well and it came, it came out very well.